Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. So you go on a date with someone who checks off all the boxes and seems like it's the right person for you. And you feel pretty confident about being on the date. And in fact, they're charming and friendly, but you are a bit skeptical after they share that they're unsure what they want. And they have a lot of relationship stuff going on in their past. And they're going, and there's always like an excuse of some sort and something inside tells you not to trust the situation because of their unreliability. But your skeptical thoughts recede because your date seems capable and, of course, is quite charming. So you continue to date them. And three months later, they ghost you without any explanation. And thinking back, you realize that you should have taken those initial skeptical thoughts more seriously. So here's the question that I want to talk with you about today. Do you trust your intuition? Are you making judgments on the basis of what you're thinking or feeling, not what you're actually experiencing? And this this might be really hard for you, especially if you are an over caretaker, people pleaser, because you may excuse behaviors that you see early on that don't feel right for you, but you override them to give them a chance and not hurt their feelings. Does this sound familiar? I, there was a woman I was working with recently, and she had such a hard time with this because she kept attracting these overbearing, selfish, narcissistic men. And, you know, going back in time as a therapist, of course, I always like to look at you know, the journey and where people come from. And she grew up in a home where she, her, you know, her ascribed role was being the caretaker, not only to her siblings, but also keeping the peace between her feuding parents. So you can see why conflict or people not happy was really hard for her. So she learned early on to focus on how others were feeling above her own emotions and needs. And fast forward to her adult life, she would date someone, make them feel amazing, and then get sucked into the vortex of a relationship, even when she admitted, looking back, that she always would find something kind of off with them. But she didn't pay attention to her inner voice, and suddenly she would be in a five-year relationship. So we really worked hard on a dating plan for her so that she could just practice dating without getting attached. And along those lines, collecting data of how she felt on those dates versus what kind of date she would give the guy. It was hard for her at first, but in the end, she started loving how she could say no, walk away from guys that just didn't feel right for her. Or she didn't feel comfortable with, and she finally learned to set boundaries. And because of that, she started to attract great men who attended her needs and loved the new empowerment she felt with it. And it created by you know, just learning how to pull in and go with her instincts. So the truth is your intuition is one of the most powerful tools in the selection process when dating. And it's really important to trust your gut. So I have someone with me today who is amazing. I can't wait to introduce you to her. She She's built her business along with helping so many other powerful people around trusting instincts. And I, I can't wait for her to share her many stories. I'm sure she has. She's a professional actress, writer, director, producer that you just may have seen in a bit of hit television shows, including NBC's Shade of Blue, CBS's Blue Bloods, CW's Dynasty, Lifetime Movie Network, Shark Tank, and regularly frequent H ah, <laughs> HSN. But instead of doing the whole struggling artist thing, she harnessed her skill set to become the CEO of the world renowned production and PR company, Noel L. Productions. NEP has been successfully executed prominent international publicity campaigns and sold out book tours for many of today's most revered thought leaders and New York Times best selling authors, including Gabby Bernstein, Deepak Chopra, Kimberly Snyder, Candace Kumai, and more. Welcome, Noelle Al. Are you there? Hey, thank you for having me. Oh, 
Rachel. Thanks for being here. Oh my gosh. You are literally, I, we were talking about this before the Jack of all trades. And I'm so <laughs> interested in hearing your story of like how you got into everything that you've done and like how mm -hmm. intuition has helped you and how you help others. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, so much to tell, but um, right? I guess a little background is um, I started modeling when I was like around 12 um, middle school and throughout high school. And so my dream was to move to New York city. So two days later, after I graduated, I moved to New York and um, initially I was modeling and then I got involved with, um, I, I took an acting class and I realized, oh, wow, this is my passion. What like modeling's great, but like, this is actually my passion. Um, so I started training and um, I had worked Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week and was asked to help produce. So then I was producing shows and, um, from there, uh, a, a client, a woman approached me and said, you have to come work for me. You have to produce all my events. And, um, you know, I always say all roads lead to Rome. Mm. Um, so even when you're in the uncertainty of having no idea where the income is coming from or what steps you're supposed to take, one of the things I've always said is um, I've asked for God in the universe to uh, ordain my path and guide my steps. And it's something that I feel very strongly on. And, you know, I don't know if you know who Marianne Williamson is, oh, but she, she says, if you start your day with, with, with God, you know, you're taken care of. And I've always loved that because, you know, having a morning routine for me has always been really important. And so I know if, you know, I do breath work or I meditate, or I really put, you know, 30 minutes to an hour into myself, I know that whatever happens in the day, it's meant to be, mm. you know? And so um, that's just something I've always lived by. But then I started working with clients who, you know, kind of spoke the same language. Um, and uh, it was nice reminders to um, just remember, oh, right. Like, Anytime I don't feel like meditating, that's one thing Gabby says. If you don't feel like meditating, if you don't have time to meditate, do you have time to feel like shit? And, <laughs> you know, it's so, yeah. it's so true. And so um, whenever I have just relied on my own intuition and my own inner compass, I've always been guided. And even if I don't understand it in the moment, looking back, it's always very clear. Hmm. I love that. Well, and you know, and I wonder, was there ever a time where you didn't trust that gut? Of and, course. And like, how did you, how did you get over that? Cause I know a lot of clients that I work with, it's, it's a deeper issue, right? This as a therapist, knowing that there's so much connected to the past and, and, yeah. and it connects to kind of their future patterns. And they may feel that gut instinct, but then something overrides it. Maybe it's that inner voice or critic from their parents or that kind of thing. So are, are there some tips or things, workarounds, so to speak, when yeah. people ha mistrust themselves? So for me personally, I, there were situations, uh, one example is, um, there've been a couple of times where potential clients want to work with me. And even though I can tell energetically it's not a right fit, I saw dollar signs. So I said, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it, and then it, it, it bite it, you know, it bit me in the, in the tail. It just wasn't worth it. Um, and so that's something now I always, if there's a red flag and often for me, mm -hmm. the red flag isn't a, like, um, a solid reason there's not always like an answer. It's just a, if there's a, if there's like a check in my spirit, mm -hmm. I pause and I try to get still and I try to figure out what it is. Most of the time I can't, but anytime I listen to it, it always serves me. And so um, when you're trying to differentiate between intuition and what's fear, for me, often intuition isn't associated with a fear. Right. So like mm. there's the ego, which is, you know, all fear based and intuition is more from a place of certainty and knowing and love. And so I'll give you an, a perfect example. I, um, this is a very long story, but I, in the past year was diagnosed with 
Lyme disease, mold toxicity, fibroid tumors, co-infections, mm. just like a litany of, of you know, Ill, chronic infections, illnesses. And um, I have really been struggling and lots of brain fog, lots of stress, lots of like losing my hair, just, I mean, a lot of, a lot of stuff. And I found a doctor on the East coast who is literally curing people. And so I was set to go out to the East coast and, um, I had everything lined up because I'm an actor and director. I had um, a production crew that was going to be there and we were going to film a documentary series around, you know, being unwell and um, everything was lined up. And the night before, like my hotel, my flight, everything, the night before I told my husband, I can't go. And he goes, what? Oh. And I go, I go, I, I, I'm not supposed to go. And he, he is like, but don't you want to, don't you want to get healthy? Like, don't you want to heal? And I said, of course, but I, I don't know why I'm just not supposed to go. And I had no idea why. And he, you know, supported me, but also, and then family members were like, Noel, what, what are you doing? You know? So I didn't go. I didn't know why. And fast forward a couple of months, we found out that there was mold toxicity in our home. And had I flown across the country and gotten treatment and spent the like $25,000, $30,000 it would have cost out of pocket, I would have come back to our home, which had mold and it would have reactivated everything. So it would have been worthless. Wow. And so, you know, oftentimes I think it's just trusting your gut. It, you know, I wasn't told, my intuition didn't say, don't go, it's not going to work or don't go, you're going to get in a plane crash. It wasn't that, it was just a nope. And thank God I listened. You know what I mean? Yes. That is such a good, that's a great story and a good example. Cause you. you know, what I'm hearing from you too, and, and I, I find this to be true just with everything. It just seems to be a theme lately is it, it's putting yourself into many, many experiences where you practice that by practicing yeah. the intuition. And then almost like I've had clients where I have them record times that that things are good because, you know, mm -hmm. often and things are bad or if they don't go right, you know, it can, again, that can override also the positives. And so I, right. I call it like honing device, like that story yeah. is a honing device for you, you know, like mm -hmm. anytime mm -hmm. you have that self-doubt, you think of the time when your intuition served you and totally. that it, I think that is so brilliant. And another thing that is coming, and it's actually a question to you too, that I, so one kind of avatar of a lot of clients that I work with are, are the over caretakers and the people pleasers. Yeah. And yeah, like they'll focus on others, but another are like high achievers and ones who <laughs> you're smart. Yeah. Like if you can relate to this is like yeah. needing that sense of control, so mm -hmm. to speak. And so that's also hard when it comes in to intuition because they're very analytical yeah. Right. And so they don't have like a good reason in terms of an equation that they can mm -hmm. say, well, this is the reason why I'm not doing it. Like what kind of advice would you give like overachievers with intuition? Yeah. Well, and I, I struggle with both sides of the fence of like being a people pleaser yeah. and an overachiever. And so I, I hear, I, I fully understand both. Um, one of the things that's helped me lately, and I don't know enough about it to really speak expertly on it, but it's something called human design. Have oh, you heard yeah. of human design? Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I'm a manifesting generator and a one three, and it means I have sacral authority. And so for that, mm. I, it's very much a like strong intuition, yes or no. And so um, when the, my makeup, if I try to analyze, if I'm in that like, sort of type a mode where, you know, I'm trying to figure things out and I try to overanalyze, it doesn't actually serve me and it wastes time. It's just very much trusting. And so I think figuring out for those, you know, overachievers, are you actually an overachiever or is that something that you learned how to do and served you for a time, but maybe doesn't serve you anymore. And that's kind of where I'm at, where, you know, it served me for many years to be a hustler and to work, 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 mm -hmm. work. That doesn't serve me anymore. And it no longer resonates. And so mm -hmm. um, I think getting more clear on the things that help you, uh, you know, in terms of 
does it make sense to make a pro and cons list? Does it make sense to call my best friend and, you know, go down the rabbit hole for 30 minutes to make this decision? Or does it make sense to just say, you know what, for this time, you know, I met this guy, I have a red flag, I don't know why, I'm just going to trust my gut and say no. And what, see what happens. I love that. That, and that, you know, all of this that we're talking about, there, there's a confidence theme yeah. here too, is having yeah. the confidence mm-hmm. to do all of these things. And again, I think just like that practice piece is huge, but yeah, there, um, there was a client I was working with to your point who had kind of that need to succeed and had that high energy, but what that was all around was tapering some anxiety that she had and trying to control that because, you know, where anxiety comes from is the unpredictable uncertainty. Yeah. And my, so, my therapist said, yeah, and I love this. He goes, anxiety comes from the inability to make a decision. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It's because for me, that, that was the thing, you know? Right. So you did the right thing going out of New York, coming to LA. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we were just joking before, like, cause there's such a different energy with New York and LA. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and I think that that's where intuition and for you listening is so yeah. important when you have that need to control things with men or women who are, you know, when you're trying to date, because what this is all about and what we're talking about are feelings, Yeah, you know, and it's, it's the, the feeling piece. And when you're not used to like pulling in and really paying attention to all of that stuff, it can be really scary. So you go to the facts, Yeah, you know, and that again, you won't pay attention to that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So what would, I don't know, like there are a lot of people who also believe they're kind of in that victim mode. It's like, well, I, you know, I'm listening to Noelle and that's great for her. She's gorgeous. She has all these things going on, but I don't have that. And it's almost this like victim mentality Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Do you know a workaround of that yes. for you? Yes. <laughs> so I, I fully get that, especially in the world of social media. Yeah. Like compare and despair is such a thing. And I, one mm-hmm. of the things that used to trigger me is I grew up, um, my family was financially, we had hard times. And so nothing has been handed to me. And I, I, I will s- shout it from the mountaintops because everything that I have is because I worked for it. I didn't have a sugar daddy who helped me. I didn't have family members. Like it was all me. So one of the things that used to trigger me was when I had friends, you know, complaining about their three auditions, they had to go on a week. But meanwhile, they didn't have a full-time job where they were working 40, 60, 80 hours a week. They didn't have, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like they didn't have these other responsibilities. That used to be a bigger, big trigger for me. And what I would recognize is, okay, I'm falling down the rabbit hole of compare and despair. When I'm going into victimhood, let me figure this out. I'm unhappy. So why am I unhappy? And I do something um, and anyone can do it. It's super easy. I make a list and I call it my happiness list. And it's, you know, maybe 10 to 20 things of, of stuff that brings me joy. So that can be drinking a green juice, breath work, meditating, going to the beach, being in nature, playing with my dog, going you know on dates with my husband, whatever it is. And I have that list in my journal. I just keep it there. And when I'm feeling like crap and I'm comparing and despairing, going down the rabbit hole of just feeling sorry for myself, I go to that list and nine times out of 10, I'm not doing one thing from that list, not one ah. thing. And so I will slowly, but because there's also times where I'm like, I don't want to meditate. No, I don't want right. to do yoga. <laughs> like, I don't feel like it. And so I'll do one of two things. I will either take a moment and sit in my feels. And so that could be eating my feelings for a night and watching, mm-hmm. you know, reality TV or something that like, I know. I don't believe that you do that, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> when you see her on YouTube, you'll, you'll see why I just joked about that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, you know, and, and I'm very well aware of it. So, you know, 
my my mom passed away five years ago, and last year my little brother was visiting on um, her birthday. And he was like, do you want to go hiking with me and be in nature? We were very close with my mom. And I said, no, I actually just want to sit on the couch and like eat my feelings right now. And so he left. And before I, you know, ordered whatever I ordered, I sat and said, what am I feeling right now? I'm feeling sadness. I'm feeling fear. Like I'm sick now. What if I pass away? Like she did, you know, like Mm. I went down the, the layers of how I was feeling. And then they say that you're, I don't know exactly scientifically the exact numbers. I think it's 60 to 90 seconds. You're, you can only feel whatever emotion for that long and then it changes. Mm -hmm. And so I would really feel the feeling. And a lot of times it's really scary to go there, right? Oh yeah. 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 I'll feel it and then it'll change and then I'll feel it and then it'll change. And so then when I go to eat my feelings, it no longer gives me that same satisfaction because I know, oh, wow, this is what I was feeling. And I wanted this to numb me out, but I just felt it. So I don't actually need it to numb me out. And so I'll either do that or I'll slowly but surely start adding in things from my happiness list into my, you know, daily. And so, you know, I know that drinking a green juice and doing hot yoga and, and going to the beach and all of these things aren't necessarily attainable in one day, but you know, it's subtle shifts that equal change. So like, you know, I'll start with a green juice then I'll start meditating, then I'll do yoga. And so those are the things that help me stay out of victimhood and compare and despair and get into true alignment with who I am and my soul's purpose. I, I really love that. And you know, what's, what's great about what you said too, is it takes the guilt out of things that you might do for yourself to take care of yourself. And that, you know, a lot of people with black and white thinking, this is that a great strategy for, Mm -hmm. because, you know, I think it's like all or nothing kind of thing. And this gives you permission to, and I think that's healthy to be more balanced with, Hey, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to eat my feelings. That's I'm doing it, you know, right, and, right. and, and if that helps you, that that's great. It's anytime you're in extreme is, is when it gets, you know, hard yeah. and, and challenging. Um, you know, this whole kind of talk about feelings, it's funny because I have an acting background too. And my mm-hmm. clients know this about me. One of the first things. It's like, I have a prescription that I give them. Number one, they have to take an improv class. Number two, they have yes. to go salsa, salsa dancing. <laughs> I love those. That's so are, good. Right. And so yeah. I, and you know this to be true that I also feel like acting is such a powerful tool in helping access feelings and giving yourself permission. In fact, I used to do something called drama therapy and, and people would play out their feelings yes. through improv games and whatnot. And so, um, have, has acting helped you you with your oh intuition and feeling like oh yeah. yeah yes yeah it's a it's a game changer I um I used to take at an acting studio called Kimball Studio that my husband actually taught acting he's an actor as well and writer but he taught acting classes and there was a class called ballistics and one of the things you do is and and he like prescribes this to any any students or clients or just any whether because a lot of times it wasn't actors that just took the class it was right. lawyers and everyone exactly and because I so agree with you everyone I tell this to everyone too like everyone should take an improv class <laughs> no everyone. question mm-hmm. and so at this ballistics class I used to say to Dan my husband and Kelly the the founder I'd be like this is my therapy and they'd go don't say that and I'm like no but truly it is because you would get on stage and you would have 60 seconds to do what they called a minute Yeah, and they would throw something at you. So it could be last night I cried mm-hmm. and the first person that comes into your mind or the first memory or whatever it is, you, you go from there. And so it's so cathartic and it's so healing. And there were many months where every morning when I'd get a shower, I would do a minute. And I would just, you know, like give myself something. And I, I think if everyone did that, like. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing too, is that when you are in your head, whether you're in your head or people pleaser and all these things that we're talking about, what the improv allows you to do is it allows you to fail. And I tell people yeah. all the time is that the the worse the scene, the funnier it is. And Mm -hmm. it's almost like this paradoxical effect that it has. I remember there was a a game that we played and I I'm sharing this because here I am a podcaster, right? So 
there was a exercise where you had to take something that you, you thought you were really bad at and mm -hmm. amplify it. Right. Mm. And so at the time I thought I was a really bad storyteller, which I laugh about because wow. it's like one of the things that I love teaching now and in, in yeah. ways of connecting with people. And so I went up and I told a story in, in an amplified bad way that it was so good. And mm -hmm. there was this like breakthrough moment that I had for myself mm -hmm. where I was like, wait, I actually am a good, bad storyteller, you know, <laughs> and I like fell into that. So to your point, like, I think it really helps you get into your body and out of your head. Like, yep. yep. So well. Yeah. There was a, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. There was an, so, um, do you know who Marie Forleo is? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. So Marie's partner, Josh, Josh yeah. Tice is, um, uh, he's also an actor and speaker and he, um, has acting workshops called Committed Impulse. And so mm -hmm. um, I worked with Josh for many years and his sort of philosophy is something that I've also applied to everyday life, which is, um, so at any given moment in this conversation right now or any of the listeners, somebody's gonna get in their head. So for me, it could be, oh God, did I leave the stove on? Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, is my dog okay? Or whatever it is, right? And then it's like, oh, wait, wait, I'm back you know, Kim's talking, what does she say? Let me, let me be back in the right. moment. And so the same thing applies for acting when you are, um, you know, there's nothing like being, and you get this, there's nothing like being in an audition and you're in the middle of the scene and all of a sudden, like in your peripheral, you see a producer take out their phone. It takes you out and you're like, yeah. wait, oh my God, I suck. They're not paying any attention. They're on their phone. Oh God, wait, the scene. And then like, it goes downhill. And so what Josh does is he has four principles, breathe, mm. see the room, feel the sensations, I'm back. And so what that means is at any moment, and this is why it can, it can apply in everyday life. If you're in a boardroom and you're in the middle of, you know, giving a presentation and let's say you mess up, instead of freaking out, breathe, really like take, cause a lot of times we're holding our breath, right? Mm -hmm. Take big inhale, exhale. Um, see the room, meaning for me as an actor, what color is my scene partner, you know, or, or the reader, what color are his eyes, you know, or like what color is his shirt? Like, let me really see my environment, feel the sensations. So when it comes to nerves, oftentimes we feel it in our chest or our stomach and it feels like our heart's beating out of our chest, but it can, it can be anywhere. And you just, you don't necessarily associate the sensations with an emotion. You just literally sit with a sensation. So like oftentimes we'll say like, it feels like a party happening in my chest because there's like mm. so much going on. So like, just, just acknowledge it. And then I'm back. And what I'm back does is brings you in the present moment and gets me very clear and very focused. And like, I'm in it. And that can literally take you three seconds. It doesn't need to be this crazy, long, drawn out thing. And so that's yet again, another way acting has helped me in my everyday life because you know, whether it's, you know, doing interviews or, or, you know, whatever it is, there's moments where we're going to get in our head and, you know, go down the rabbit hole of analyzing everything instead. No, no, no. Let me be present. Let me be back. Real. Yeah. And by the way, right. that so applies to dating <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because right? right before you walk into a date, that is a great exercise to do because so many people do get out of the present and they start thinking about all these things. Oh my God, my hair. And I don't think he likes me. And he just looked at the waitress or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like all the yeah. things that you're talking about right. and those judgments and assumptions based on things that are like outside of yourself, yep. some uh, often are false, first of all, but it right. brings you out of your body and not, yep. you know, with the person. And so you lose the connection often. So totally. I, I, everybody needs to do that before the day. I always teach yeah. people to get a date prep plan before they go out. Ooh. And this, this should be part of the plan. I'm, I'm stealing yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> well, I have one last question and I have so many questions actually. We like, we could go on and on. Um, did you use your intuition to land your husband? I know everybody's wondering that. That's so funny. So I met him when I was 20 years old Aww. and we've been together 15 years, 16 years. And, um, we, I met him and instantly my intuition was like, that's your man. 
And I, you know, it was so funny because we were so young and I just knew. And, and what's wild about it is I, um, we had worked at the same restaurant in Times Square. It's like the only restaurant, it was Planet Hollywood, which is hysterical <laughs> because it's the only restaurant that will hire people fresh off the boat. Cause I mean, yeah. I had just moved to New York and a lot of places won't hire you if you don't have New York City experience. And I'm like, how do I get experience if nobody's gonna hire Planet me? Planet Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we both went to Planet Hollywood and I saw him and I knew. And so he was very shy. And I started asking around about him because I'm not shy. And I was like, right. that guy. And I had never, by the way, approached a man like that was very foreign to me. And so I heard he had a girlfriend and I was devastated. And one day I just got up the courage and I said, I just want you to know, I think you're kind of cute and I have a crush on you. Oh my gosh. You uh -huh. did not. That is, uh -huh. that is, I was like terrified peeing my pants yeah. and he goes, he goes, okay. And that was his response. And I was like, oh my God, peace out. Like, <laughs> wow. All right. Bye. And he goes, no, no, no. Do you want to go out sometime? And I said, well, I'd love to, but I heard you have a girlfriend and I'm not a home wrecker. So like, and he goes, no, 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 I'm not that guy. And so sure enough, couple weeks later we go out and we've been together ever since and you know but it took it definitely took me going out of my comfort zone and like approaching a guy which like I said I've never done mm -hmm. um but it was it was worth it <laughs> Okay. So for you listening, there's so many things that she just shared that I teach and and that's why I love that example and that you know you you really trusted your gut first of all because yeah. you there was yeah. something about him and you didn't you didn't give up like you let go mm -hmm. I mean there was all the kind of signs would say yeah. right not available yeah right and you said no there's something here that I I need to do this but she also did it in the most feminine way which I was like loving to hear because <laughs> a lot of times people say I can't approach guys but the way that you said it was so feminine mm -hmm. at the same mm -hmm. time and so that, what a great story to end on. Um, and oh, well, you're, you're you. awesome. I, I oh. wondered, um, is, do you have any like what, last words of wisdom or things that you want to share with everyone? Um, sure. I, I guess I would just say like, you know, in the last 16 years, I have like, I really strongly believe jump in the net will appear. And so, you know, whatever that is, whether that's going for a guy or, you know, a new job or whatever it is, sometimes taking that leap of faith can change your life in the most miraculous way. And, you know, uh, this is, I'm like, let me give you Cliff Notes version. I, yeah. when I, when I moved to LA, I had been coming back and forth between New York and LA for so long. And I was married and instead of like sitting down and having a discussion with my husband, like a wife probably should do, I said, I love you. I have to go. I'm moving to LA. You can come or not. We'll figure it out, but I got to go. And that was terrifying. And I had no idea if he was going to be like, I want a divorce or, you know, and we lived, we, we were physically separated. We were still married and together, but we were separated for a year. Oh, wow. And it was so hard, but it was also the best thing that we could have ever done for our relationship because we grew up together. We were, you know, I was 20, he was 23. Mm -hmm. We had become codependent and mm -hmm. I needed to find my independence and he needed to find his. And it was such a beautiful thing. And it took that act of courage to potentially save our marriage. And I had no idea. I just wanted to be in the sunshine. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, I just wanted to be in LA, but, um, he's a little bit more of a creature of habit and I am someone that jumps and he is someone that like, give me a, give me a beat. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, that, I, I just think that can be applied to, you know, relationships as well, where it's like, I often felt like I'm such a doer and I go to parties and I do this and I do that. He's a homebody. And I always thought like I needed my partner to do all of these things with me. And what I've realized is I so appreciate that he's a homebody and like, thank God we're both not extroverts because that would get exhausting mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, 
Um, There'd be competing you know, energies there, you know, almost. Right. Like you guys right. kind of balance each other out. That's really cool. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing that you're saying, and it's a, it's a great thing to think about, is that e- not all discomfort is bad, you bad, know, because, yes. right? Like yes. change happens when mm-hmm. there is discomfort when you're in the state of comfort, you stay the same, yeah, you know, it's, it's just that plateau. And so there is a difference between the gut that is saying, Oh, red flag versus right. I'm scared. I'm a little nervous, but I kind of yeah. like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Right. Well, they say your body doesn't know the difference between, you know, being excited and being nervous. So, yeah. you know, for yeah. me, anytime I feel nervous, I'm like, no, I'm excited. Whoa. You know, yes. so it's like flipping yes. the script. And leap towards that excitement. Well, no, yeah. Noel, thank you so, so much. Are there any um, websites or things that you want to share where yeah. people can get a hold of you? Yeah. So um, I'm most active on the gram. So it's at Noel underscore Ellie. And uh, you can also check out my website. Um, it's Noel Ellie productions.com and productions is plural. Oh, it's Ellie. I said your name wrong in the beginning. I'm so sorry. It's Ellie, Noel, Ellie, everyone. (laughs) Well, thanks again and take care. Thanks for joining me today. And this has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. And if you're having trouble trusting your gut, and because of that, you fall into bad patterns of dating and relationships, hop on a free coaching call with me personally by clicking on the link you see in the show notes to book it. And I can help you map out a plan so that you can trust yourself to attract that one. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now.